Hey, it's Mitch Nate at Survival. Today we're going to talk about the bow drill in proper form. Don't go away. Okay, so when I'm cutting my depression, I always cut away from myself. I usually make two, two cuts. Away from myself, like this. I keep going around in a circle. And when I'm cutting into the grain like that, it tends to uh, bind up because the grain's running this way and it doesn't cut as well. So then I'll just switch to my left hand. Yeah, see, see that? How it takes that corner really nice. Like right there, catches the grain. So I get these little burrs. Again, I just switch to my left hand. Just takes them right off. Simple stuff. So that's how, how I make my depression. Just go around and like a glancing cut. Well, I'm almost scraping it instead of cutting it. I should do it. Okay, so all I did was just get the hole started now. Okay. So I just have to carve my notch right here. So I'm going to go right in the middle. Alright, so there's my cut line. Cut in a little more. I'm going to cut into it. On each side. Oops, sorry, I didn't realize that was slightly out of frame. And again. That's what I'm looking at. Okay. I'm going to go further in, but I'm going to just do the exact same thing. So I want to get it a little further in, not all the way to the middle, but a tiny bit more. I like to go about halfway around there. This is a little too shallow. But it's almost there. Now I don't I don't want to make it too much wider. So I need to have these um, this front ridge right here needs to exist to stop the drill from flying out. So I need to be very careful but not going too wide on here, or else there'll be nothing stopping it from, from coming out in the front. So, I'm not going to go here and go wider. I'm going to go inside my V and cut deeper in this way. Let's clean 
it up a little bit. Okay. So I'm further in. Again, I'm just trying to make a place for the dust that you saw built up all around to fall out and collect in one spot. So now what I like to do is uh, cut this in this angle back here. And what that allows is a wider base. So it's not just a, a thin column holding up the ember. So I just basically just go like this. See that? Let's do it on both sides. Okay, that will do. You don't have to go, uh, you know, over analyzing this too much. I just want a wider base that I do th than I do the top, and I want it to go about halfway in, and I want to make sure I still have some front edges here. So I don't want to go too wide. using a leaf to collect my dust. Oh, I also took the dust that was around my rim from burning in the hole and I already added it to the pile. I always use a green leaf, in this case sassafras, which is actually uh, the best green leaf that I know of, to lubricate my, um, my socket on my handhold. The reason why I think it's the best is because um, when it breaks down, when it gets crushed, it has a, a clear mucilage. It's like a slime that comes out. Perfect for this. It's like grease. So I kept my spindle in my pocket with the point of contact facing out. So I didn't put it on the ground to get moisture or anything like that. So when I'm done, you know, in between, throw it in my pocket facing out so it doesn't collect any moisture. Little uh, details like that really add up.
<clears throat> okay. So it's smoking on its own, so that's my ember. I'm trying to get this in frame. Apologize if I'm not. There you have it. It's safe to hold. It's safe. Okay, so let's talk about a few things. So, what I like to do is have my notch and drops of dust fall towards me, not away from me. Okay? The reason why I like to do that <clears throat> is I find that I can see when my notch is building up with powder because it's facing me. I don't have to lean forward and try to um, change, you know, I end up changing my angle to lean forward to see better. So let me show you. So say I'm, I'm doing my thing looking like this, right? And I want to see if I'm filling up with dust. I'm going to lean forward to check and what does it do to my spindle? Changes the angle of my spindle, okay? So that's why I have this coming towards me. <clears throat> now let's talk about form real quick. Uh, form really breaks down um, into three uh, categories. So it breaks down into three categories. You have your body form, you have your hand form, and you have your spindle form. All right, so basically the way that body form works is when I'm over uh, my hearth here, what I like to do is make an imaginary center line, center line of gravity, going right through the middle of my hole, okay? So right through the middle of my hole, 
and it goes all the way um, past me on both sides. So basically, um, my front foot stops me from falling forward off my center of gravity. My knee is on the right hand side of my center of gravity, stopping me from falling this way. And my back foot, I actually swing it around. So it, my toes are on the left side of my center of gravity. So what that does is it creates a stable tripod. So I can't fall to the right. My back foot is stopping me from falling to the left. Okay, so I'm stable this way. And my front foot stops me from going forward. And my back foot and my knee also stop me from going backwards. Okay, so I have this really stable uh, foundation. Okay, that's correct body form. Now the reason why you want to have correct body form is um, basically it's, it conserves your calories and it allows you to focus on the job that you're doing which is trying to create an ember. You're not trying to hold your balance. You're not trying to uh, do anything else. Let's just put it that way. You know, if you're constantly catching your balance or, you know, trying to gyrate, get everything just right, find the right spot, you're wasting energy, you're wasting time, you're, um, you're not focused on what's important. So you need to fix that first, okay? So this allows me to be nice and solid where I can just sit here and go as long as necessary. And that's important because you don't want your form to hold you back from getting an ember, right? Or your form has failed you, okay? So that's the first thing. That's my body form. So three pieces, tripod. Center of gravity through my socket and I make a tripod, okay? Now, the next thing is my hands. My hands form. Get my, my hand, my hand over it. <clears throat> is basically my left hand being against my shin, and I want it to basically be stable and not have any angles. Because if it's gyrating and rocking, or, you know, rocking and, and all that stuff, it's going to create friction on the other side. And again, what am I doing? I'm a machine that's off balance. I'm inefficient, I'm wasting energy, and I'm paying attention to fixing that instead of paying attention to watching if my, my notch is filled with dust so I can hit it with more speed and pressure right at the end to create that friction um, temperature that reaches uh, ignition on the powder. Okay. Now the other side of hands feels right. The other side of hands is my right hand on my bow. I want that to be uh, pretty level. You know, I really don't want to be up and down because if you're not uh, level, then now I'm going to be hitting the ground. You know, I'm going to be striking the ground here, striking my leg. God forbid. Go the opposite, hitting my hand, scraping my knuckles against the ground. And now my strain is going to start riding up and down my spindle. Now I have to pay attention to that while I'm doing all this other action. And what does that do? It throws off my kilter. Again, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm all off balance. I'm wasting my focus. Okay, it's very important to have things locked down. You know, my handle's a little backwards here. I got to get this right. Good. My hole's not centered, so I have to get my handle just right. All right, and the last thing that you have to get form uh, on on your form rather. Is your spindle form. You want it to be absolutely plumb to your socket. You don't want to have any angles, nothing like that. Completely plumb. What that um, does is it creates the most friction. It's all the downward pressure and all the um, growth rings are working against each other instead of glancing off. Okay. You don't want to be going, you know, at, at a uh, awkward direction. It's going to throw everything else off and it's going to limit your friction. You want everything to be straight down. I want everything to be rubbing as much as possible, okay? Now what I do is, um, I just go um, pretty easy, not really easy, but medium for me. Nice long strokes. You guys saw me just do it a minute ago. And what that, what that um, allows the drill and the, the socket to do is to heat up, stop producing dust, okay? And I don't have a ton of pressure, but I have, um, again, medium pressure, medium speed. That's how I like to run at first. 
and it will heat, heat this up and fill it up with dust. And as I see it start to fill up with dust, and the dust starts piling up around the socket, around my, around my drill, because the, uh, the notch is completely full, it has nowhere else to go. Then I pour on speed, which you guys saw me do, and I pour on pressure. And I just hammer it, you know? And I just, I don't know, maybe go 20 times, 15 times after that. I, I don't like to put a number on it though, you know? I like to go as long as is, as is necessary. Let's put it that way. Because that's what's important, you know? It's not like a science. Oh, you go 15 times, you're done. Too many variables involved, okay? So this is what I mean. Nice and strong. Right, right of center of gravity, left of center of gravity, and I'm plumb. Okay, start off just to get going. Then medium speed. To get myself plumb, I just sit here. Pretty much it. Got a, got a ember again. I was just showing you guys what I meant, but again, where's my spindle go? My pocket facing out. Got another ember. Again, I apologize for the uh, dirt bikes in the background. I'm in common ground right now, not private. Okay, so you see, again, we have the buildup of powder on the outside. That's because it filled up the, the notch, so it had uh, nowhere else to go. Okay, now this is a eastern white pine spindle, eastern white pine hearth. Took it from a dead standing pine. And as you might notice, this is brown dust. So yes, brown dust works, okay? Not just black dust, brown dust works. Okay, let's talk about the uh, handle real quick. It's just a uh, round piece of lumber here, branch. And I just drilled through with my knife. You can see the, uh, the green material that I put in there. So again, I like to use uh, sassafras. And really, you know, you can use anything. Anything that's completely alive and green. Um, I always like to use something that's you know, better if not, you know, I'm not going to use poison ivy, you know, I'm going to use maple leaves, birch leaves, and if I can find sassafras, like I said, I think that's the best, because it creates like a grease inside there. So let me get some sassafras, I'll crush it up, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I just have a few pieces of sassafras here, here's the trident. I have another video talking about sassafras, so you should, you should already know what I'm talking about. Basically, I would just take one of these leaves, put it in my handhold like that. But let me see if I can show you. There, you see it? It's like a gel. So, Again, it creates like this really slimy substance, and I think it's just awesome for, uh, for bull drill ha uh, handholds. Okay, let's talk about the spindle now. Spindle, 
about that long. About thumb thickness, maybe a little more. I'm a pretty big guy, I'm like 6'4", so I like a big set. Some of my friends use small sets, they're small guys, they can get away with that. And uh, I carve this so it's um, rounded. Real easy to carve that way, you basically just make a, a, a uh, kind of like a, a, a point, but you don't make it very long, you just make a short point, and then you just take off the point itself, and you keep doing that, cut it down until it's like a, a rounded rounded top. The other side, this is, they look almost identical, is the pointed side. Now what I do is, on, on this side though, I make sure that my first cut, see right here, they all line up. See how this one's higher? Then this one's lower? You can't do that on this side. You can't mess around with that. All your cuts have to be the same height going around. And what that uh, creates is is something that curves all at the same place and it's very even and very tidy and it just um, it seems to work every time when I do it that way. When I have it like this, uh, the edge of my of my friction source is in a different place and it's just inefficient and doesn't create as much friction. That's a real big tip that most guys don't mention. I've never seen that mentioned. Here's another thing. I never carve it smooth. See how it's smooth right here? I didn't do that. That's for my string. You can see the angles that I left. So when I carve my spindle, I literally just spin it, carve it just like this. You can even see, here's my cuts. Spun it, quarter turn, quarter turn. I like having those, those ridges on there because when it gets really smooth, your string tends to slip. You're in big trouble when that happens. Then you basically have to reshape your spindle and change the, the tightness of your bow. So about the hearth real quick. Basically, um, I carve it down. Just how I want it. I don't do the whole batoning, splitting thing where you put your knife on the side of a, side of a branch or a log and you just bash through it. I find that uh, creates irregularities. It splits apart the grain. It adds twists, which is the worst, because then your board isn't very flat. This one actually isn't very flat either. But it's not that bad, though. I mean, you know, I find where it's, it takes huge, huge turns, and you don't want that. See, this is the flattest part of the board right here, which is why I used it. You know, I like a nice flat board, because when I step on it, everything's just the way it should be. It's not lifted up. You know, you step on it. I can try to drill into here because now your, your drill has to be sideways right so everything's flat everything's going straight down everything's completely plumb just works works really well that way so I got two embers out of this hole and it's got two embers out of this hole and I still have a little left on each you know if I really wanted to blast it I might be able to get a third ember out of both of these still a lot of embers left in this but I get two out of each hole that's very common for me and I think that's really important too, you know? Conserve your resources. You know, if you find a, a bow drill kit that works, make sure you get the most out of it, right? So I, I just doubled my fires out of this. Again, this is uh, Eastern White Pine. It does have a little resin content in it. That's why you heard it screeching a little bit. You can usually see it in your, um, your socket. There it is right there. See the resin content? There's a little band of it going around. So, when my drill goes through there, it squeaks a little bit. But don't, don't just give up. Keep going. Because I, as you can see, I just went right through and I kept going until I made embers. Same thing here. And you guys heard that. It was right there. It was that band of resin. Right there from the pine. But it was a small piece. It's very light. It doesn't smell very turpentine. You know, it, had, it passed the fingernail test where it makes a dent. Right? So you can use pine, it makes brown dust, but as you can see, it clearly works. Okay, so the bow. Now this isn't necessary, but if I'm gonna make a bow, I'm gonna use more than once. I usually uh, tend to put a little bit of work into it. I just carved a notch, a stop cut right up here. These two half hitches. I like my branch to be basically straight. This has a tiny bit of curve. 
I'm liking it. And on this side, I'll undo this so you guys can see. I don't like to cut my cord, obviously. Most guys don't. I'm going to make a really nice bow that I'm going to use over and over and over. What I do is I carve another stop cut right here for my string to wrap around. Just like that. And I keep going. And I finish it off. This is how I finish it off. You know, just like, like, like all of us do, really. Put your finger over it. I, I just do a tuck. Put it underneath. Pull it through. It cinches on itself. It's almost like a clove hitch. Okay, so the other thing I do is, not only do I put a notch in here, I also cut a notch this way. Like a ridge, like a like a like a, a path. So the string lays right into here and gets caught on this 90 degree angle. Right there. And it just holds it perfectly. You won't lose tension on this. Just something I uh, figured out along the way. Okay, so this is actually my third ember with the same hole now. And I got this idea to, um, to get this angle for you guys, so I came back out here and I just wanted to get a close-up of the spindle spinning. And I hit a large patch of resin in the wood, but you know, if you just keep at it, um, you can still persevere through resin, you know, if it's, if it's squeaking. It's not always 100% going to fail. You know, there's still a chance that you can succeed. And this is a, as you can see, this is a good ember right here. It wasn't an easy one, but I was able to force it because my technique was there. Again, brown dust. So that, that, that's not always an indicator. There's two things here to learn. Brown dust isn't always an indicator of failure. And a squeaky bow drill isn't always an indicator of failure either. So keep at it. Alright, it's been Mitch and Native Survival. Thanks for joining me today on using the bow drill in proper form. As always, I appreciate your views, your comments, any support. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.